Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of Sunland Board of Selectmen. It's November 19th, 2018. Call to order at 6.30. Um, first order of business is we have a public hearing. Uh, before we get into that part, I would just like to uh, thank the, uh, the 300 committee for um, a wonderful, the wonderful past year. Um, we'll have a more complete rundown. We're going to have them come in the next couple of weeks so that we can discuss what went on, the good things that happened over the, the last year for the 300th. Uh, it was topped off this past weekend with a, a gala ball that was held at the Blue Heron. Um, and also we had a Veterans um, Veteran Day service that, that was very well attended by veterans from the town. Um, it was a very, uh, it was a di it's a different service than Memorial Day, and as the speakers, the speakers talked about the difference between Memorial Days and Veterans Day. Um, so it was, it was kind of nice, and hopefully we've been, Tim Merritt, the former principal of the Sunderland Elementary School, had started a um, Veterans Day observance um, a ten, about 10 years ago um, and it's grown it's grown every year since um, typically it's done with the uh, the elementary school the day before Veterans Day and the uh, members from the armed services in uniform have an opportunity to visit with the, uh, the grammar school uh, students they get to ask questions um, and answer questions, and they have a great time eating lunch with the students. Um, and I would hope if someone ever has an opportunity um, next year, the following years, to attend the uh, service, it's a very wonderful service, listening to the, the speakers and, and the children sing. Um, it's usually a very good time. This year is a little chillier than most, um, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll get back into the swing of things yeah. next year. A little, the temperature will be a little bit better. So. so first thing is we have a this is the first time for everything, and we have a public hearing. And I like to convene the public hearing at this point. We're holding a public hearing um, concerning a poultry processing facility. Um, it ends up being in the Board of Selectmen's purview because we're a town under 5,000 people. So because we're under 5,000 people, it comes to the Board of Selectmen. So we had to read up, or Selectmen had to read up on poultry processing plants over the last uh, couple weeks. Um, so the first thing that I will ask um, We'll bring the uh, public hearing to order at uh, 635. And David, since Scott is not here, he won't be here this evening. Uh, Scott had a previous <coughs> engagement. So if you could, David, read the public hearing notice. All right. <coughs> Pardon me, I do have a bad cold, so I apologize. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 111, Section 151, the Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing to consider a request from Peter Lesnica. Did I pronounce that right? Lasnica, sorry. To allow a poultry processing business at 136 Russell Street. Assessors Map 10, Lot 82, Sunderland, Mass. The hearing will be held Monday, November 19th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the Sunderland Town Office Building, 12 School Street in the second floor conference room, Sunderland, Mass. Okay, so Peter <coughs> is uh, before us and he is looking for a permit to operate a chicken processing facilities um, so at this time Peter you want to uh, basically let us know what your plans are sure um, so it's a approval letter from the town usually support a help um, so I raise chickens and on a farm on pasture um, there are mobile houses that go throughout the land and, um, basically fertilize as they go, and it's a really clean system. Um, but part of raising chickens is having a way to process it. 
Um, so I have a 40 foot shipping container located in a 40 by 100 foot metal building. Um, so after I raise the birds, I'd like to process them on site. So you open up the end wall, the birds come in, you shut the door, um, and then they go through the container and come out as food. Um, the reason for putting it in the building is, the idea is if you drive by the road, walk by the road, you have no idea that chickens are being processed. So really clean, sanitary, um, the facility will be spotless. So the goal is no one to know it's there. So there's no outward change to the appearance of the building and just a really clean process. Um, I'm going to use a, for removing of the solids, that'll be in a gasketed sealed dumpster located about 500 feet from the road. Um, the liquids will be put in a 2,500 gallon holding tank and then will be pumped by a service truck. I remember seeing that from the paperwork, and I remember seeing the photos. Yeah, typically, Peter, what we'll do is that you have a, you'll, you'll be able to present your, the way a public hearing works, you'll be able to present what, what you're planning on doing. Um, the abutters, any concern, can address questions to the board, uh, then, then we can answer those questions. When we close a hearing, at, at some point we'll close the hearing at that and when we close the hearing then we no longer have the room to allow for further conversation so that's when the board would have has to make their decision we can make our decision tonight we can we can table it so that we could gather more information or reconvene it um and then then we can come back and if we need to come back another night to discuss further things so um, it's, it's a pretty structured thing. Everybody needs to uh, voice their concerns from, from the initial. Um, we, just so everyone knows, the, uh, the, the applicant is for application for the plant to be on 136 Russell Street, um, Sunderland, which is uh, probably about a, th a third of the way down Russell Street on the left-hand side, if you're heading south on the left-hand side. Um, the, the abutters um, have been notified. We have a list of abutters here also. So they have been, they have been notified as well, so they could attend this evening. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'd like to answer questions if anyone has it. Okay. All right, so you, you're all set with your introduction? All right. Any question from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Are you going to have going up and down the road after you've processed the chickens? Because I believe in the brochure we got, is it 200 chickens a week? Yeah, so that's one pickup truck's worth of chicken. Um, 200 chickens in a pickup truck? Mm -hmm. in this so <laughs> if you have a, a chest freezer that's say <coughs> six feet by three feet by three feet, uh -huh. that'll hold about 150 birds. Wow. So, we're, we're, think about like a football size, uh -huh. so it doesn't take up that much space. Interesting. So are you actually packaging them there, or mm -hmm. are you just preparing them to be packaged? Um, so they're processed and packaged there. Okay. So they go out ready to go. So you have equipment there to do that, correct? Um, for packaging, it's, they're put on ice to get them cold. Uh -huh. And then once they pass the temperature check, then they're bagged, labeled, and ready to go. How does the, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to monopolize your time, but how does the fluid waste get put into that container? So, because one concern I have is that we have ground contamination <coughs> and available there's brooks and streams back there on that side of the road, the same there is on our side of the road. Sure. So there's a, it all filters or it all flows into a floor drain that's 12 feet long. Mm -hmm. um, the container itself is located three or four feet from the wall. And the Inside concrete, the yeah, the concrete is sloped to the drain, mm -hmm. so it's all collected there. Um, really, there's no possible way for it to not go into that drain. Mm -hmm. No, the blood's separate from no, the No, that's what we're just saying on the 
So blood is considered like a solid waste. So it's that's considered a, a solid or a liquid waste? The solid? Really? It doesn't go in the same thing because it coagulates. So, okay. so yeah. Peter, if you, if you want, you want to come up here so you don't have to turn around and walk in. I, I know it's, it's difficult sometimes, but that way. Okay. Sure. Now I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't so, see you, Peter. <laughs> I know what you look like. So now you've got, all right, so what, are, what do you consider the food waste that go into that? So it's gray water, so say you're spraying a bird down, it's right. whatever water you spray. Um, so yeah, it's mainly water, um, a couple little bits of stuff, but that's caught with a mesh cloth. So mainly just water. So the dry, which is the blood, which I'm more concerned about is the blood, where is that, how is that disposed of? Um, in the, it's an organic compost dumpster. Uh -huh. So it's a gasketed sealed dumpster um, that'll be located about 500 feet from the road. And how does the blood get from the building? I guess I'm trying to think. I mean, my father killed some chickens many years ago and he hung them from the clothesline and you know, off goes the heads. And, you know, I, this is what I remember as a child. And <laughs> so it was a little different. So how. Are you processing it so that the blood drains and gets into that receptacle? So there's a, a catch basin mm -hmm. and then a hole that goes into a five gallon bucket. So that collects everything. And then that five gallon bucket gets dumped into the solid waste. Correct. Okay. You actually hang them by the, by the feet and um, drain or not? They're cones. So they're steel cones that they go in head first and that. Um, so putting them upside down sort of relaxes them a bit. Right. Um, and it, it's changed a little bit over the years. Yeah. <laughs> it prevents them from flapping too. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, my name is Yusuf. Mm -hmm. I am just about I mean, this one house over from where you're proposing to put the plant in. Sure. I'm at 124 Russell. Mm -hmm. So I just have a couple of quick questions if you don't mind me asking. Of course. This is a new business for you, right? You don't do it. I've right done now, it for five on? years. I'm sorry? Five years. You, you operate all? Where do you operate? It was a mobile unit, so it went from farm to farm. Um, so dealing regulations with each individual farm at five different sites. Okay. So many different parameters, and um, some had neighbors 50 feet away, um, and there were no complaints. How many chickens are you planning to have back there? typically are what's your season like how long how many chickens so the season runs from end of march to early november okay um there's going to be no birds on that front part uh, so it's going to be in the back of the building no not even in the back of the you know where that brook is mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so there's that big field and then the yeah. brook yeah. so they're not going to be on that they're going to be behind that so the back part of the property and you don't do them in winter? Not in winter. He stops, he's going to stop. So Peter, you know, you, you explain the processing part and I'm not very, you know, I'm not very sophisticated enough to understand though. My biggest concern, I have two concerns, okay? Obviously, my biggest smell. Do you anticipate having smell, odor of any kind coming out? So that's the thing, that's a misconception that there is a smell because okay. it's fresh bird. So they're processed fresh. Um, and then everything is cleaned spotless. So the container is built with stainless steel equipment. The walls are painted aluminum. The floor is epoxy. So you wash everything down, get it spotless. Um, all the waste is put into that sealed dumpster way back. Um, the holding tank, that's below ground with a sealed lid. Um, so everything's cleaned at the end of the day. So there's no re residue for smell and fresh birds don't smell. So in your, in your experience that you've been doing it for the last five years, none of the neighbors have complained about any kind of odor or smell or anything coming out of your business? Correct? No, I, I've had people 75 feet away all day and they didn't know what was going on. I do read on the internet that somebody, I read a few things, that they live next to a chicken farm and the smell is dreadful. Why well, is that? What kind of chicken farm? 
well, this is it. There's so many. No, what, was it a big commercial big. one? Oh, yeah. <coughs> with, 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 Yes. 30,000 30, birds in a barn. Yeah. This is on pasture. They're moved every day. Yeah. So the, the manure isn't building up. It's being spread and the grass regrows. So it breaks down really fast. There's not a big layer. So it's a, a little sheet that gets moved along. Yes. And then it gets uh, broken into the ground. So it really fertilizes. What about... Um, insects and mice is there a, is there some sort i know that you have to comply with the board of health inside your premises do you have some sort of restriction for the outside i mean the grounds or no because my concern is again i'm not very educated on this i'm trying to learn as i go along and i see new proposal should i be anticipating maybe some sort of mice problem in the neighborhood um i, I don't see why there would it's not, so it's a sealed shipping container. Okay. So. No, I meant your operation inside, like all the blood flowing and the cutting and all that. That's so not gonna have any effect on th any There's problem. no, all, the container is a sealed unit. Okay. And then all the liquid comes to this drain, so it all goes away. There's no re residual. So that's why there's no <clears throat> smell. Um, for grain, it'll be stored in tight bins that mice can't get into. Um. My other concern is, you know, obviously this is not probably not your concern anyway, but the property value, you know, why are, is the town letting a chicken processing plant come? You know, no offense to you, Peter, you know, obviously you are an entrepreneur and you got to do what you have to do to do your business. I am concerned more at, as a town residence that why is the town alone allowing a chicken processing plan to come in a residential neighborhood? You know, maybe our selectmen can answer that, or maybe that's something that you guys have already thought about, Fred. You know, uh, I don't know if that's something that you want to address, or maybe don't want to address. Sure, yeah, but shoot, right now we're just going to take. Okay. The, the, I mean, there's a process that we follow when we do the public hearing. Yeah. And, and we'll, we, we will get to that, but if, I mean, right now they're address, you're addressing questions to Peter and we can get to the, when, when we close the hearing, then you can ask that of, of us, Yusuf. Well, well, one last question that I had was, how often are you gonna get visited by the Board of Health? Is that like a requirement that the Board of Health comes and visits you so often? Yeah, so it's under state inspection. So the Board of Health, they can show up. Uh, it's a state level, uh, it's food protection program. They can show up whenever they want. Um, and they do show up. Yes. Your turn. My name is Kristen Little. I have a farm on Russell Street as well and have raised chickens, turkeys, sheep, goats, pigs, um, pretty much everything. Um, and. You know, one thing I want to say, I have, I've toured Peter's facility, and I mean, it's amazing because it's this enclosed container that's inside of a barn. I mean, it's so incredibly clean. I've, I've seen people doing the mobile processing, and which he did for five years, and it's the regulations are are so incredibly strict. I mean, it's amazing. The state of Vermont has actually chosen to do, when they did their mobile units, they chose to have um, one person that did the, went around and ran their mobile unit because for them they felt like it was easier to train one person. But So he's had to work with all different farms, all different um, towns, all different health inspectors, and has made every one of them happy. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with, with his setup. And the, and the worry about, um, you know, the, 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 that people always do, you know, hear that, you know, chicken manure smells, well, that's confinement systems. You know, that's um, people that are raising, you know, large numbers of not just meat birds, but layers in confinement systems. And you've got this, you know, all this manure in a small area. Um, that's where you get all the odor from. So, I mean, I'm... I'm I'm very, and I'm, and I'm really happy that Sunderland is the town in this area which desperately, desperately needs um, a place to, I drive to New Hampshire and 
to um, Rhode Island in order to get my birds processed. I have to go all the way down to Buffonius and go like the night before and sleep in a Walmart parking lot to be there at you know six o'clock in the morning. I mean it's it's crazy because we <coughs> don't have a place to process our birds. You know we we are a, a, a right to farm community. Sunderland is and you know with farms certainly there comes you know noises and and um, odors sometimes probably more from my kind of farm than from what he's going to be doing. But um, we're a very forward-thinking town, you know, and I think it's really awesome that they're supporting farming in this manner. You know, I'm, I'm well, obviously we live in Sunderland, and obviously we already knew that as far as farming was a part of life for us, you know. And I have farmers that actually farm right behind my house yep. at 124 Russell Street. Yep. Yep. So that's not a concern. I, when I bought my house, I knew that that was going to be a part of my life. I didn't really realize that. Uh, chicken processing plant. So this is more like a learning experience oh, rather than a more, it's not an objection per se, yeah. it's more of a learning curve to find out more about Peter, what exactly he's going to do. You know, obviously I am very anxious about the property value. You know, yeah. I don't know whether it affects it or not. You know, whether it will. My agent said it did. Your agent said it did. Yeah. So that's, a, and she's my neighbor. Which yeah. is actually and he like, raises chickens yeah. in a small way. Peter, did but, you, you know, buy your place or are you leasing back? I own it. You bought it. I, I think people he also compare. Okay, to guys. That. We need one person to talk at. We need one person to talk at a time, and you need to address the board. Okay. So, so it, it's just to maintain. Yeah. It's just to maintain uh, a decorum. So I think some people compare the um, chicken processing to a. Um, all livestock processing plant, and they're very, Pretty very different, different um, you know, operations. You know, at an all livestock, there certainly is a lot more noise and odor because they are housing, you know, uh, four-legged livestock, sheep, goats, pigs, cows, you know, in a building while they're waiting to come in to get slaughtered. So it's a completely different animal. Just to give you guys more information of the difference between. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. My turn. <laughs> so you have a free range thing going on. Is that what you're doing? So um, I got a picture. This might make it easier. And I guess my other question is, how many chickens, how many birds are you going to have there at one time? Obviously, um, it's going to be more than 200 if you're doing 200 a week. So uh, thank you, Peter. Thanks for the pictures. I think that will help. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, I've seen those. Um, between a few hundred to a thousand or two. Um, but that house holds 500. Oh, okay. I was going to say, that doesn't seem like very much. So, they're going to do 200 a week. Where are they going to So, they're, they're eight, it, it's six to eight weeks they're raised for. So, oh, okay. 200 a week is not that crazy. No, but I was just wondering how you're going to get 200 a week and only have like a thousand birds. So at that, it depends. It, it takes me a while to raise and market. So um, <coughs> that house there can hold about 500 birds. Uh -huh. But Peter, uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt it. You are going to have people bring chickens to you to process as well, correct? That's part of the regulation that allows me to do that. Oh, like this okay. young lady will bring chickens. <laughs> That, that's part of the, the regulation that that's allowed. Okay, that makes sense. I, I, was, I was doing the math and I was thinking, boy, he's going to run out of chickens really fast. <laughs> as far as your question earlier, ma'am, about the, the smell and everything, I've been by large facilities in the Midwest that are like what you're describing, and they're nothing like this type of facility. <clears throat> The, those large processes, they, they can have some odor, but that's a very different type of facility than this is. The, so this it is picture, different. this is the facility in the barn. It's 300 square feet, so it's less than 10% of the barn. It's a tiny little... How many thing. employees are you going to have, Peter? Um, to start, just me. Just you? Yeah. And you just want, and you're saying that it's going to be like one truck coming, going in and out every day, and that's it? Not every day. No, because a week. A week. I'm just going to do Saturday, Sunday. 
that's it? Yeah. You're not going to be there Monday through Friday? No. It, the demand isn't there for that. But if it changes, the things can change. You're not restricted I, I, to I'm science. limited by the license. I can only do a certain number of birds. So you can only do a certain number of birds per week? Per season. Per season. Yeah. And what is the number? Uh, 20,000. Okay. Which and you break it down from, say, March through November? Yeah. How many is that a month? That would be three or 4,000 a That's month. That's nine months. Nine months, so that'd be 2,000 a month. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. So, so Peter, could you explain? Could you explain who the oversight? What oversight is this for your uh, facility? Sure, it's a um, food protection program from. Uh, so that's the state operated level. through the U.S. United States Department of Agriculture, right? Um, it's uh, Mass D or D O H. Um, okay. So Mass Health. Board of Health. Yep. <coughs> it's an exemption from USDA, so that's why there's that ceiling. Okay. Um, and it's also local board of health. I've worked with Steve, Steve to yeah. figure yeah. out the parameters, and he's so the food protection people they do the inside <coughs> of the container, and Steve does the property. So mm -hmm. the rest of the um, the outside and whatever. Okay. Any other oh, questions? Also, MDAR is involved too. Mm. So they, they do occasional inspection. <coughs> okay. So so to just follow up, um, does anybody else have any questions? And the reason I ask is if I close the hearing, then we don't you don't get this to contribute any longer. Mark? So from a common perspective, mm -hmm. okay, I've been over, I've seen Peter's uh, facility. I've had an opportunity to spend quite a bit of time with Peter. Um, I think that he is very, very truthful. He respects his property. And he has come over several times and asked if he can help neighbors. And I think that as a young man starting out in a farming community, I think that that is uh, <clears throat> something that is uh, very admirable. We don't see that much today. So I just want to compliment Peter on what he's doing and what I've seen from a work ethic. I think it's uh, something well worthwhile for our community. Thank you, Mark. Yusuf? I do have a question for sure. you, actually. So, one, just so, so that I understand the process, you, you're, you're hearing from us objection, pros and cons on this yes, sir. from all of us. And then how does the process work? Do you guys decide whether they say yes or no? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, right? <laughs> well, Yusuf, I've, we've been, I've been, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I know. We haven't had a chicken processing plant come before us before. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> um, I had the opportun opportunity to uh, talk to the mayor of Northampton, Claire Higgins, former mayor of Northampton, when she, and and I, I at that point I asked her. I said, Madam Mayor, what to you <coughs> becoming mayor? What was the most um, thing that you didn't expect to happen? She said, she said, you know, Tom. He says, I never knew I would know as much about town dumps as I do <laughs> as mayor now. <laughs> Um, so, Yusuf, I would actually tell you that I had absolutely no knowledge of chicken processing plants before two weeks ago or so. Um, <coughs> I, I, if you told me two weeks ago that the Board of Selectmen in the town of Sunderland would be talking about a chicken processing plant, I would have told you probably go talk to the Board of Health. But the way the law is written is if your town is under 5,000 people, um, they have to come talk to us. Now, I can tell you um, that the Board of Health has met with Peter, um, the, and 
the only approval that's going to be needed from the Board of Health is for the their wastewater tanks. They they need to talk. They'll come to talk to Peter's operation. Um, and then they said at review of the engineering plans and discussions with the inspector, uh, the Board of Health has voted to approve the plans. Um, they, their biggest concern going forward is that they, they would like to review his contracts for waste removal. <coughs> they probably pass along to you, Peter. That's, um, um, as this would be the only foreseeable potential health hazard that would affect his and or the community's health. So that's 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 from the Board of Health. So that that's good to know because I wouldn't even know how to start going about that. Um, so that's that's what Peter has here. Um, if we made a decision this evening, our decision I would probably ask for a an affirmative or no vote but if it is affirmative it would be contingent upon the board of health getting all the documentation that that necessary under their purview um, but as far as a building inspector is concerned the building inspector doesn't have have an issue per se looking at at that the, the zoning and it is an agricultural use, and it's over five acres. Um, so because of those, the agricultural use and five acres, greater than five acres, um, agricultural is allowed. So when you asked a question before, that's pretty much why we'd even be entertaining that. Um, so are there any other questions from the audience or the abutters? on the plan. Any other questions? Peter, would you like to add anything else? Um, nope. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to move that the hearing be closed so that we can um, begin our deliberation um, about the processing facility and the process going forward. So, Sherry, could you please declare that the at the uh, the public hearing portion is complete at seven o'clock? Okay, David. Questions? Questions of Peter? I don't think so. I think, I, <clears throat> I think most of mine were answered through um, through the questions he answered tonight. So I think I'm looking pretty good, and I read through all the material and everything. So <clears throat> and I do have a little familiarity with. That kind of stuff so okay um yusuf had asked earlier why the town would entertain a project like this um i i think it's a there's 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 a couple reason a it's allowed allowed by statute that's the most um, important reason and, and and basically we would need to see some detriment or be presented with some detriment to the community um, why it shouldn't be there. That, that would be the first thing that I would, I would look at. Um, the, the second thing is, from my understanding of the information that's, that's been presented, I do believe that the, the abutters as well as the town is protected with the oversight through the Board of Health and through the the, uh, the various State Department the regulatory commissions that deal with the processing plant. Um, I would say if there's ever a concern, the concerns can be addressed um, pretty rapidly through either the Board of a uh, Board of Health or Board of Selectmen. Um, and I also the, the, the one thing I will, will add is that while Peter may be a, a good steward of the business, um, we can't just think of Peter per se. We, we, have, to, we have to ask what, what, we have to make sure everything is, is in place so if Peter leaves his business that the next person <coughs> that picks up the business is doing, 
is doing what's right. And I think when the uh, the Board of Health with the stipulations that they 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 included, I think that was very. I, I think that was is one reason how how they addressed that. Um, now, David, do you do you think there's a need for a site visit? Um, not at the moment, but I mean, if um, I mean, if you want to go out there, you know, I'm no problem going out there. <coughs> you don't have a problem scheduling a site visit, do we, yeah. Sherry? Peter, are you mm -hmm. available? Anyone's welcome to come by at any time. Would you like to visit, David? Yeah. Like sure. on would Saturday be okay? Um, Saturday afternoon or anytime Sunday this week. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, schedule a site visit. Yeah, or <coughs> if this weekend isn't convenient, you want to do it the following weekend? Um, this weekend should be okay. I okay. can make it work. What day yeah. what day is good for I you to do? Saturday will be fine. Yeah. Saturday afternoon should be good. Yeah. We'll just double check. One o'clock? Yeah. That, that okay? That'll work. Yep. Sounds good. One o'clock share. All right. Any chance of us joining you guys or, or me? Is that okay? Just to take a peek? It, it's up to Peter, but if he doesn't have a problem, I, I would. One yeah. o'clock Saturday? Yeah, that's fine. One o'clock Saturday. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone can come. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, so I, I would, I, and I think that may, I think that may, Sometimes seeing the process is a lot because I don't know if anybody's ever been to Del Mar Peninsula. I mean, in seeing chicken houses with thirty thousand chickens inside, but yeah, it's, um, it's a little different. Think, <laughs> it's big, but right? I, I think I think looking at it would help. That's the yeah. inside yeah. of it there. So if that's okay, absolutely. So I, I think too. Like I don't know if you, if you may I want to take a look at that. Everyone. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it's. A little more akin to like a, a large, um, if anybody's familiar with the processing kitchens up in Greenfield, it's kind of like that. I, I just, I, I just, personally, I just, I just know like there's only like one, I think there's like one slaughterhouse in the area now that, well, you know, yes. and, and, and I think if we want to promote a, a viable uh, agricultural base in our communities, this is something that that's needed. So, but I also understand that the neighbors, you know, I mean, you got the, you're the stakeholders, and you, you, and the questions are good, good questions. So we should think. So what we we will um, table? Should we table it or? You shall recess. We shall so recess. Until, <laughs> then we we shall <laughs> recess. <laughs> the long so recess. Saturday. <laughs> I get confused with the town meeting stuff because there's there's right words and there's wrong words. <clears throat> we will recess until Saturday. Uh, Saturday, Saturday the twenty fourth. I believe. Saturday the twenty fourth at one o'clock at Peter's facility. Thank you, Peter, for inviting us, and it was nice meeting you tonight. All right, so uh, and then we will have a vote to, at our next meeting after the review. Okay. Is that a motion, then, David? Yes, that is a mo yes a motion. So uh. So I'll second. All those in favor say aye for the aye. Two zero. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Now we're going to talk about kayaking. <laughs> thank you. See you Saturday. See you Saturday. Have a good thanks. Okay. A Saturday. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. They may want that. Okay. Next up, we have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Catherine's going to come to us and talk to us about ki kayaks.
Catherine? So I would love to start a kayak lending program at the Sunderland Public Library, um, kind of conjunction with the opening of Riverside Park. Um, and so I think it's a really important way for us to, you know, let our residents enjoy the beauty of our natural surroundings, um, celebrate the park that we have, and also, um, you know, provide a, an important service that I think is inaccessible to a lot of people without having it be a, a free service. Um, so the plan is that um, we would, the library would purchase three kayaks along with paddles, um, any kind of um, life vests of every single size we would have <laughs> options for, um, safety whistles, um, all sorts of protective gear, um, and that we would loan them out to patrons. So patrons would essentially come to the library. They would have to um, sign a release form that releases the library in the town of Sunderland from any and all liability. They would also have to read the policy and initial every part of the policy to see that they have read it every single time they borrow it, um, yep. just to ensure that they fully understand the risks that they are taking. Um, and they would be given a key to a storage shed that would be stored in Riverside Park, um, and that would um, allow them to check out their kayak to use on the Connecticut River. Um, it would only be used on the Connecticut River. I don't want anyone putting it on their car and taking it to another location. Um, we would have little, you can get little dollies for like a little wheel set for your kayak, so you can kind of easily move it down from the parking lot area to, uh, to the boat launch. Um, and um, library staff would also, you know, just monitor the weather for the day. And if it's, you know, bad weather or there's a storm coming, you know, kayaks are, are out that day. And staff would have that right to, to do that. Um, and we definitely monitor that closely. Probably high water, too, would be another condition. Yeah, absolutely. Currents, anything yeah. like that. So we would definitely be looking at the state websites to kind of see what they, they yep. say and weather reports and everything. Um, I got this idea from the MN Memorial, Spear Memorial Library in Shootsbury. Um, they've been doing this successful program with both kayaks and canoes on Lake Wyola for several years now. Um, their library director was very kind and let me see their plans and also look at their waivers that they've been using successfully for many years. So these are all based on what their town council had already approved. Okay. Um, so I, I would definitely love to have our town council make sure that it, it's the way we want it, as well as town insurance companies we to were make sure about that, that. It, it looks good. Because um, right. I it is a risky program, that's without a doubt. Um, but I think that the benefits far outweigh the risks, and it should be there's risks in, in any kind of physical activity that, that takes place. So right. I just want to make sure everyone is aware of the risks and protected. How many kayaks you plan on uh, looking at, Catherine? Um, I would like to get three. So I'm thinking two singles and one double. Um, folks can check out as many as they wanted to. So if you want to take a group out, you'd be welcome to, to take them. Um, any children would need to have their parent sign it. It couldn't just be a family friend. It needs to be the parent signing a, a release. I think that minors would use it. And only people over the age of 18 would be able to check out the, the kayaks. And it would also be limited to Sunderland residents and um, Shootsbury residents if um, we, our Sunderland residents would then get, be able to borrow the ones in Shootsbury too. For the reciprocal, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Half day, full days? It would be a full day. You get it for the whole day, and then you can, when you return the kayak to the storage shed, you bring the key back to the library and you can put it in the book drop. Um, that kind of gives people the flexibility to take it out, say, if they want to go out early in the morning or something, they're welcome to do that um, rather than waiting for us to open and only have that couple hours or something in the afternoon before it gets dark and then turn it back. So. Do, do we. So you need to have town council review it, right? Yes. And they have they have not as as of yet. I don't think so. Not yet. My My has it. Right. <clears throat> and do you need credit card? Like, are you going to use like credit card authorization for it or something like that as a deposit? Or, I wasn't sure no. what um, Shootsbury does. No deposit. So okay. essentially, if you have a library card, um, you check it out. I think I would probably edit the release to let folks know if they fail to return the kayak. It would be a heck of an overdue charge. <laughs> yeah. So we don't charge overdue fines, but if yep. they were to break the kayak or lose it, steal it, Damage. they would be responsible for the, the cost of the yeah. kayak. I was just thinking too, because you were talking about like taking it away, you could you could look at um, using like tiles or you know the little um, Bluetooth tracking 
the little small oh. devices as a way to track it so that if it goes out of the area, you that's might want to look at that. That's a safety idea too if someone gets yeah. lost. That's right, because it might help, you know, if they if they lost their phone and they kept, because I've done a lot of kayaking. I think, just as an aside, I think it's a great idea. I'm just trying to think of, like, all the, the potential. Yeah. <laughs> the one other thing I was thinking about is flotation devices. Um, yes. It's, it's imperative that they have, um, you know, they, they, they really should wear it, especially to even an experienced kayaker. I, I've seen people get into some really nasty situations. Um, I've had to go rescue people who've, who've uh, had problems too. So it's just something to, like to think about too. And maybe look at getting um, the in the inbound pumps too, so that if they do take on water, they're like about that big, and you can just pump off the water. You know, in case um, <clears throat> and it, that's a good thing to to have too. So um, I will say part of the release is that they are initially that they will use a, a light vest. Okay. Good. So are we providing a life vest or yes. okay? So I will have a, a storage shed full of uh, life vests of yep. every possible <clears throat> size available. So that's honestly that's gonna be more expensive than the packs getting yeah. all the life vests. Yep. And I don't it, want to it's typically a little shorter too for the kayak, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's a good idea overall though. I think it's a, especially with the location right near the river, it dovetails nicely with all the stuff we're doing with the park and the boat ramp and everything, so um, it's a good idea. Yeah, I would just tell people to paddle upstream. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Go upstream that's right and then come route. back. Go upstream first. Yes. See, that'd be good. Back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and right. also, you know, we'll check the, the, back, the river. If it's, you know, obviously if it's too shallow or something, you know, kayaks right. don't go out that day. If it's too high, the kayaks don't go out that day. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's things that I... I just, just from my, my experiences, um, teaching someone how to, I mean, it, it may be intuitive to a lot of people, but putting on a life jacket sometimes the right way, uh, PFD is, is a difficult thing. So, I mean, proper signage and um, would be necessary, um, properly fitted. Um, I, I know education is a, is is a huge thing with with boating to begin with so yeah. I, I i think some information will probably have to be generated to to make sure that i was thinking maybe we could um uh we might be able to get fcat to do a video well i was just saying a public service yeah, video or something. Exactly. Right, exactly and i think there there's so many different parties who are involved in the in the River and I, th I mean, I think that that it could be a really fun project. Actually, it could be. Yeah, and we could do maybe like orientation sessions too. Maybe at the start of the season, yeah. um, you know, teach folks a little bit about kayak safety, how to properly put right. the vest on, and that would be open to anyone, not just people who want to borrow it. But um, check with EMS over in um, the uh, Holyoke Mall too, because I know they rent kayaks, and they may be able to help you out with some. Um, and Hadley, yeah, um, Holyoke, <laughs> Hadley. They might be able to help you out with some stuff there because, um, <clears throat> or you, you might even be able to find out on the uh, internet too some videos on um, like water entry so that if somebody has capsized in their kayak in the middle of the river, there's some easy ways to learn how to get back in it if you don't know how to Eskimo roll and things like that, so, which most people probably don't. So um, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good... Um, Eskimo roll. Eskimo <laughs> roll. Yes, yes. Um, and, but and it's also a fantastic way to see the because in this section of the river we don't have the, the power boating traffic yeah. that you have elsewhere, and it's a fantastic way to see it because you're basically sitting at the surface of the water. It's a great uh, it's a great way to do it. But yeah, there's definitely ways to get back in your kayak once you've. They're actually a lot more stable than people think. It's actually kind of hard to capsize in a kayak, but. Uh, most of the time that happens when people are entering and exiting it so okay. that's usually when they have most of their problems but it's a it's a great idea though <clears throat> but they might be a help you know, too give you some pointers maybe add a couple of uh kayaking books to the library collection Definitely. if you don't have some you know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah yeah and that was my plan as long as we get the approval i'd be going to various kayak shops talking with other more experienced kayakers because that's, that's not me um but finding out everything that we need what's the you know best beginner kind of kayaks we yeah can get, exactly and yep. everything you can do to possibly keep folks safe 
maybe a subscription to get donated to Sea Kayaker magazine or something for you, you know? Nice, yeah. yeah. There you go. <clears throat> I, I in, in my other life, um, I've been very involved with water safety, so I I, I think... You had a little passing familiarity with boats, didn't you, I think, at some point <laughs> in the well, past? Um, many times, but in, in the education <coughs> part is very... Right? Yeah, I was important. teaching a class to the U.S. Rowing Association one time at Hoyle Community College, and I said, well, how do, I, how do you guys get on that without life jacket on? And yeah. he says, and I said, what is your life jacket? And they all they said, well, our oars. Yeah. <laughs> and that they, that's what they consider to be their life. It's their flotation. Personal flotation device is an oar. Huh? Um, but I, I, again, I, you know, I, so I'm very s concerned about safety on the water. So I, I, I would hope, I, again, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with David. I, I mean, I, the, the Connecticut River from, from here up to the Turner's Falls Dam is an absolutely gorgeous facility. You see all, I and mean, we, I've seen deer swimming in the river, bald eagles, mink. Otters, yeah, herons, all sorts of kingfishers. The heron, yeah, nice. osprey. I mean, it's a bear on Moose. the third island. I've seen a bear <laughs> up there. I, I mean, I, it's an absolutely gorgeous, and I, I think it's an under underutilized, never mind the fishing. It's, it's absolutely fantastic fishing. Walleye, largemouth, smallmouth. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great, great to be on the river. I just, little, I always get concerned about people that and and the river can be um, an area of concern so. right. especially when we have storms like Irene and everything and but yeah I don't I so <coughs> Catherine you guys the friends are coming to the library tonight just to say hey we'd like to do this selectman do you have any concerns yeah honestly I'd like I mean, I'd love to have your approval. The Board of Trustees um, have supported me, but they want to make sure that you guys are on board because we were a town department. If, if we get sued, you guys get sued. Um, and we want to make sure that whatever policies we have in place protect, you know, protect the town. Okay. So, so, David, I don't have... Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I can make a motion, yeah. yeah. All right, well... Um, go ahead. Uh, make a motion to approve the... Um, <clears throat> the library's kayak rental, um, you know, pending, you know, we go through our legal counsel and, and address anything else that we might need to. Um, I don't know if, do the building inspector need to do anything about the, like the rental Historic shed or yeah, whatever we're going to call it or anything. I don't know if we need to check on that, but, um, or do we need to check with, where were you thinking of placing that? I guess my only question is you may want to check with um, Fish and Wildlife about the placement. I don't, I don't know if there's any. the library, right? Or yeah, it's, is it towards... in, it's actually going to be in the park. We don't, I don't think we have a spot. Okay, and so then you have the dolly to take the out? Exact spot yet, but okay. it would most likely be, it could be in the parking lot, and have, like right in front of the library, essentially. There's like that median. I know that's a big yeah. area, so I'm not sure if that's the best spot, but we're also thinking towards like where the handicap parking spots are going to be for the start of the trail. There's a, gotcha. there's a field there, kind of where the rec department has their storage sheds. And then you pop it on the dolly and walk it down. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I love the, the spot that's that median spot right on the road because it's it's so right convenient, there, but I just, somebody would have to, because there's, there's like a kind of a drainage. Like a dip. I'll check with George and just see if it's even Yeah, possible. exactly. But, yeah, and if not, um, it would have to go when we're going to have to negotiate with the baseball folks because they've got like a big pile of dirt um, there and we'd have to have a 15 foot setback from the property line yeah um uh i don't think there would be any other kind of building or zoning issues with it but it would have to have the 15 foot setback okay. so that's just a little bit you know You'd have to, it'd just be a little more difficult to carry it from there. But, but with those wheels. With those dollies should yeah. help, yeah. 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 I think it's a good idea, though. So, so you make a motion. motion. I made a motion, yeah. I'll second. Sounds good. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
uh, two zero. But Catherine, if I'd, I'd like to be involved with a safety prop. Yes, please. That if, would be fantastic. Um, and I think I can get information about life jackets and PFDs and their wearing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that'd and, be good. Um, you want to be in the video? Huh? <laughs> I said you want to be we'll do a video. public service. So you and I will do one. How about that? <laughs> and, and again, I, I just think that it's it uh, to to in my experience is it, it's very intuitive to put on a, uh, a, a personal flotation device, um, but I I have seen them on wrong many times, and and that that'd be my. And there's an easy, there's easy testing. I mean, it, there's, there's nothing, you know, special with a type three. You can take a type three, and and you you can just have a person stand before you, and it takes two seconds to check check if it's right or wrong. So, I I'm just very cautious, because um, and again, we have to res we have to respect the water. But okay, nothing. Thank more. you. I'd love to have both of your input on this. So so I would like to work with you okay. on that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have a 2 0 vote, Sherry. Good luck. Thank you. All right, good. <laughs> Mr. Wisman, it's going to be a regular occurrence with you. Like, mm -hmm. But he's oh, here this time, too. I know. Yeah. You're, just, you're, just, <laughs> you're just a car yeah. today, huh? You're not the wheel. <laughs> okay, Sherry, what do, you got, what, what do we have with Mr. Mr. Mike Wisman tonight? Um, they are requesting a common victuallers license for the millstone. Okay. I believe the application is still downstairs. Yeah. But they'll tell you a little bit. You need um, this piece of it. Yeah. Um, so this VIT license would be Vittler's what, what, how, how license. Do you say, how, do you, how do you pronounce it? I was going to say. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that to I come up. I learned my lesson a lot. Have you been using the correct um, pronunciation since that? Goes I back to. lesson from a uh, respected. Mike 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 read, Mike read it incorrectly, and he was he was corrected on. Yeah. Next time I, I saw him, I was yeah, very humiliated. Mrs. Mrs. Graves. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. I, but I remember a very valuable lesson. I should remember. Um, <laughs> so, so you need this, Sherry. I don't know what else you have, but this completes the picture. Okay. Um, so this villa's license would get us through the end of the year, and then we'd be. So on relicensing the, time. On the regular renewal. So, um, as typical, when new business comes to town, Mike, would you like to uh, like do sales? Maybe David should do the sales. Y your opportunity to do a plug for what you're we, asking we get, for the license we, we allow, for, right? This is an uh, unabashed plug you, time. You get, so if you, you want get to plug, half hour to 45 minutes. Too no, long. you have to 7.30, <laughs> so you have to 7.30. Oh. <clears throat> well, I mean, we are really David, this is a David adventure with my support. Um, and uh, the Millstone's been in town for a long time and we don't see it drastically changing from what it is. We will, uh, Jeff is uh, retiring as of Friday and we take ownership of the business. Hollis will still own the facility. And uh, I think we will continue to do what he is currently doing. Um, but. We definitely have changes in mind. Um, doing a better job with produce, and we're going to take advantage of the kitchen that we have over at the maze across the street to do more prepared foods. And ultimately, uh, we'll see. We'll see where the avenues take us. But that is a quick synopsis. So, so in other words, um, Dave and Mike Wisman are taking over the operation of the millstone. We are. Mm -hmm. Starting next week? Starting next Saturday, this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, the 24th, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. So on the 24th. So you guys will be taking over on, um, as of right now, no wholesale changes? No wholesale changes. No whole wholesale changes. The plan is to kind of get in there and we're in the business, get our feet wet, and then See what works, we, what we've doesn't talked work. to Hollis about making some improvement to the building in general going forward and then potentially aiming for some sort of grand reopening in the late spring. So um, hours of operation. 
Um, same as they are now, for now, um, I think probably, which is nine to seven. Seven o'clock, um, yeah. Yeah. I think going forward it might adjust slightly, maybe opening a little bit earlier in the morning, but we'll see how that plays. I mean, he was opening seven to seven, and we might go back to that format if the if the early morning business we can drum up enough business to justify it. Okay. But, um, Products will basically remain the same. Basically remain the same. And a lot of people go in and out of there and rely on it. So. And I hope more. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, many as want to come through. There you go. <laughs> um, To be a new wish stop on the maze now, you know. Dave, wish, I wish you and Jess and Michael good future success. Thank you. I, I mean, it's a it's a it's a good business to have in town. Yeah. Um, it it's, uh, brings a lot of people into town. Um, we go back to the old days. I mean, you know, back when Richard had it. As, as I've talked to Michael before, it was it was a photo. I mean, it was probably one of Second or third most photogenic. It really was. Yeah, and we and, want and to enhance that. We're hoping so, to get back to something. Yeah. You know, right. So it's worth the picture. Yeah, and I mean, you, it was right behind the sycamore tree and the view from Sugarloaf. It so. absolutely was. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I mean, I remember growing up as a kid. So. Yep. Yep. It's um, kind of one of those. Local ownership is good for a business like that. Um, connection to the community. So uh, I wish you guys nothing but Thank you. success. Thank you. So, like, David, do you want to you want to make a motion for the uh, the license? Uh, make a motion. Go ahead, say the word. <laughs> Come on, David, you can do a little better. That was a little long. But <laughs> I'll make a motion to <clears throat> accept the common Whittler's license. What we Whittles. used to call a vitriller. Vitriller license. Yeah, vitriller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it goes back to the old fire. English. We were corrected. Like Whittles. Vitlers, Vitler, Vitler. Vitler. Yeah. Common Whittles. Yeah. Um, I will second. Any other discussion? Uh, no. Nope. Out here, enough. No further discussion. All in favor? And it's uh, Mike. Is it Mike's name? The license? Did he put in it's, his name? It is. Okay. Mike Wisman, Common Vic. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 2 0, Sherry. Congratulations, guys. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck, guys. One of the unofficial meeting places in town, you know, so. Hopefully it continues to be so. There you go. All right, Stanley coming in. I hope so. No, here he Is he here? Come on in, Stanley. Only a couple of minutes late. That's pretty good. Stanley, you want to talk to us? What? Chicken. You know, I like it better when you're working for Warner Brothers. Really? <laughs> oh, wait, that's fireworks hasn't started yet. I know. This is all about this, all this thing that happened here with, with all this money and water and everything. Okay. Now the water, so, so, so why Stanley, is that our responsibility to do that? So, so, so Stanley lives on Hadley Road and your concern is with? A flooded basement. Dra drainage ditch. I live uh, on Hadley Road as well. Okay. Well, it's not just my house. No, I understand. Everybody on the street has pump, it's got pumps going all over the place. And, and what it's from is the water. And I, th I think it's the responsibility of the town to take care of that. Okay. I mean, there's no need for it not to be taken for me. What are we going to do? We're going to wait till April to, to, to dry it out? I've been, you know, I haven't slept one more day, Three weeks. more than an hour. Yeah. I've been we're sleeping, through, I'm working 23 hours a day just trying to keep it, the two pumps I got going. I had to put now, that's in ridiculous. another sump pump. I mean, that's got to be that's got to be changed. That's got to be taken. That, we used to have in this town a bond for that. 
They would put money away for that, and they would, every ten, two years, uh, 10 years, they would go with an excavator and clean it all out. And it's, that's what happened to Reed's Night now. Now, I don't know whatever happened to that money, but we had about bond for that, set aside for it. I, I saw this, I've seen this so many times. I've been here for my whole life, so I've seen it a lot. And it's always been easy to do. And you know, we got a lot of people that are losing money. Um, we had a medical appointment on Thursday. Mm -hmm. and, and Two hours gone, and by the time we got back home, half the cellar was flooded. Okay. Now, a, a few years ago, there was a study done, and it and it showed that the the ditches were draining, and that the ditch level was directly related to the height of the river. Well, it's pretty high right now. It, and and you know, I not only got water, I got a floor that's collapsed down. We got cracks it's been pumped on, on the, the floor. Front underneath. We don't know about so the So I'm, I'm looking at $25,000 for that. Oh, sure. To have that put back in. Now, why is that my mistake? It's not my mistake. I didn't do anything with it. In fact, I'm not even, you know, I'm further, I'm 100 away from the where your work was. Mm -hmm. And Marie is and, on the You know, Castle. and all that water is in my house. How did it get there? I mean, you know, I just, everybody here has got bad problems. Everybody here. And this is not fair for them to, to not be able to have somebody from here help them. That you should have got an email from my neighbor, too, because now there's 20 foot of water on her her lawn. We get an email. Um, 160 Hadley Road. Uh, two sons, six foot two. What's their name? <laughs> uh, my neighbors. Um, do you know what my neighbors is? It's a Well, anyway, anyway. Farmer. No. Uh, a farmer. It's, it's yeah, not pretty. There. Okay, it's not so pretty, I bought no this. I bought at. my property what? two years ago. Yep. And um, there was just one sump pump, and last year, no water, no, no problem. This year, right from March onwards, I, I had up to eight inches of water one time. That's how I got to meet these people. They loaned me a pump to pump it out. Um, I've had to replace my furnace um, because it was all rusting out. Um, I've got a new sump pump, and that was, you know, three and a half thousand. So 5,000 for my new furnace, 3,000 for my new sump pump, and I've got the house on the market because I'm going back to France. The buyers that come and look at it take one look at the water standing and they walk away. So I can't even sell my house now. There, there's something else I want to ask. Shoot. Huh? On the uh, parking, that council over there in, where all the people are living. The apartments. The apartments. Where's the Should water for that go? Which, uh, which are you talking about, the Sugarloaf yeah, Estates? Yeah, Sugarloaf one? Estates. Yep. Yeah. Where's the water for that go? Which water? The water, where does it go? The, when the water hits it, where does it go? That You're talking about rainwater? That building is full of pipes. It's, there's pipes going everywhere. Where does that water go to? You're talking about just general rain runoff? Yeah. Yeah, because I never, yeah. I lived there for <clears throat> six months. There was so, no you know, I mean, where, where does that water go, I'd like to know. And Laurie just got Because to me, it seems like that water goes right down to Tom's farm. To where? To Tom's farm. Down the road? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it comes right there because Carl Kaneski did all the work right there and they put a lot of pipe in there. I remember seeing the work being in there. So, I mean, they, they put it in there and the water's got to be going that way. So, if the water's going that way, now we're getting a double barrel on the other side. Laurie Descavage, our neighbor directly across from us, and she gave permission for us to speak for, for her. She has underground pipes. And she was told when she brought that property, she ever dug down, not to ever touch those pipes because they feed into the brook. I mean, this, this is not a good thing for either one of us. It's a, it's a problem for be, either one of us. It's all got to be solved, though. Well, I think, I think part of the problem is, and I've experienced this on my property as well, this is a record-setting year for rain. I've lived here exactly. since the end of 1999. So part of that has to be taken into perspective. And I've had, I've had water standing in sections because it used to be a, I think it was a horse farm, well, I think yeah. where my house is. It, and I, I don't, I've I, had, I can't speak for everybody else right now because <clears throat> they're gonna have their turn to tell you everything. But 
when you did that culvert about a, a year or two later, I noticed it was starting to move around a little bit. And what happened is it cracked everywhere and then you know, they had put stone in, in front of the wall in that, in that whole thing. Well, all that stone went flying. It went down, down the brook and it started, it started, stopped it right at, the, at a certain point and started building up dirt behind it. So which it was, culvert, which culvert are you talking about? Uh, actually, it's the, the one, the one close to my house. The new one that we put in? Huh? The new one that went in the fears? About three years ago, yeah. yeah. Okay. This guy. And you know, <clears> the, the, the thing is, my is house is, is 100, 100 so, and something feet away so from ask George where that to, culvert is. We, we put in now, a culvert a couple of years ago. How did it get ago, over there? About three years ago on Hadley yeah. Road, down by... Uh, I've been pumped, like I said, I've been Meadow pumping Lane. steady for, ask, this is the fourth, fourth to come out the fourth the, time uh, a year. I, I, think, I think everybody has, Stone. anybody Stone. who's had Stone. any, well, yeah, that's Stone. another Stone. issue. Stone. Stone. <coughs> everybody who's Stone. got Stone. some pumps has had them ask pumping much that. more this year than any year in the past. Well, well, it's a record I've got, I've got green. Two, two, two inch company pumps. They're that heavy. They're going steady. I don't doubt it. And because the groundwater is much higher now than it's been in a long time, too. So. I tried to do that and come with research about um, how much rainfall <coughs> there was compared to, and I, it was really hard to, to get it to go back beyond, I think, 98. And um, they still keep saying the average rainfall is 4.5 inches for these different months. Um, so I couldn't actually substantiate that. But what intrigued me when you said that the study showed that the level of the river was the level of the. Um, how did they how did they establish that? That it's to do with the level of the river, because we're at two sixty six uh, above seawater. So is the river above seawater too? Then I believe the river is above sea level. Yeah, we're, we're somewhere that, between two and three hundred feet. That was a study that was done. And the Conservation Commission has that information. Okay, okay. But with her house, this goes it, back for three owners. I moved, I moved a lot of water today. Water. Not just her. Where the no. animals are down below there? Oh, oh. I opened up the dam. And we and two and a half feet in about uh, an hour. That's how much it went down. It coming, coming by, but it's still not enough. So they they had actually dammed it up. The, the they papers? had a dam dam up. I, like I said, I, I pulled out uh, two and a half uh, feet of it. I couldn't get to the other side because I had it was too late already. But it, it, I dumped a lot of water and it, it actually right up to the, the brook over here. The the other one, I cleaned that one out. All you can see is grass there now. What would it But you still to, can't find the pipe for that. that. So that means you still got to go down deeper. Because you, remember, you guys put a pipe in there. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's an 8-inch, 10-inch, uh, 12-inch pipe, it's, and it, you can't see it. You still cannot see it. But you can, it, it's basically all you can see is grass now, that, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of that laying there, too. So, you know, for somebody to dig that out, you're going to be there for a ton of time. The jocks, we not used to do that either. with I'm an excavator. One guy with an excavator, he'd go through there and inside there with the older, older excavators, We'd have it done in three in five days. All and how done. much did that cost, approximately? What are we talking about, money-wise? We're talking about how to get the money out, uh, not get the money, but how to get everything so everybody can work together. Yeah. Oh, true. You know? But I'm just wondering. Thousand dollars a day. Only five thousand for an excavator. Okay. It, you know, for an excavator, it's cost a thousand dollars a day. But you look at what you can do. Sure. Stanley, you never charged me a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> what did he Stanley, charge? you never charged me a thousand dollars a day. How that's, much? That's what it's he, he'd about. be like eight thousand dollars. Oh! <laughs> if Stanley's charge was it was a thousand dollars an hour for him. No. Oh, no, yeah. I've never. You never done. I you have know, the bills. You know I've never done that. <laughs> I have the bill. You, you know I've so, done a lot of so, good stuff for you. So, too, so, so, Stanley, can can you two please? Sherry knows you. Can you give um, your names to yes. Sherry so Sherry can read? Yeah. Marie Hudson. Yeah. And I'm at 162 Hadley Road. Oh, Do you need my phone number? 413-333-6839. Carol Michkoski, 199 Hadley Road. 
and I will fill in the name of my neighbors next door. Um, they're 160 Hadley Road. And she said it was to the, what do you call yourself, Liederman? No, what, what's this called? Oh, the select board. Select board, Liederman. I knew it was, that's the people that put in my uh, sun pump. Okay. Um, <laughs> she said, yeah, I know, a leader. I was like, okay. Just, I knew it was. Just watch out for you. She's on fire. Okay. No, no. Um, but um, uh, uh, she's a school teacher. Um, she, she said she was writing an email. Okay. Because no they, yeah. the water had come in 20 feet on her property. I, I don't doubt it. There's more water this year than, and nightmare. Oh, granted, that's, the this was part of the rainfall amount. Yeah. But the problem with a lot of it is it gets get jammed up. It, you know, the water pushes up so far, the sands come up with it, and it just plugs up and, and all the jumps debris. over and keeps going. I mean, it's just like that right along. I mean, I yes, Stanley, hold on one second. Yes, ma'am. Places down there. I walked down I'm almost that whole thing. Oh, somebody I'm behind you. Also interested in this issue. Well, she, on she, just trying to say something. And my name is Teresa Brad, the owner of the You got your book? I got it. Bring it up here. Show it to him so what it looks like. Did you want me to go? Let's see him. Again? He's got a book of the old town. What's that? Yeah, he's got the book, a book of the old town showing that whole thing being the, the whole place, the whole line of it. Uh, four one three two one. And that's the way it used to be. It, it was when they when guys got done with it, it was done. It was good. And for for him to do it in a year, I mean, in, in ten years was nothing at that point. Once they got it started and got the rhythm going, it was even quicker. Do you have water then? No. Um. Well, my. I haven't had it in my house, but my sump pump is, is running like it never has. 24 7, Teresa. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I was interested uh, because I knew that at one point they cleared the ditch. I've lived there since 1991, and uh, I've noticed a big difference in when that ditch was cleared, and I don't know when the last time that was, and my sump pump. You know, didn't run that much except in heavy rain. And now um, it's been many years since that was cleared, I take it. And my sump pump is, um, doesn't run continually, but m more than ever. What is your neighbor's name? What's your name? What's her name? Did you give it to her? No, I don't know it. I've got to get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jethro's the dog. Okay. I, I do know Jerry. I like to approach the selectman's table and use your, your paper there and I'll write a little map and uh, talk to you a little bit about this issue. I live at 127 Hadley Road. You want to use the board here? Yeah. I've been uh, in town my whole life. Volume one. Yeah. Currently live at 127 Hadley Road. <coughs> picture some of the areas in town here for that ditch that, that was dug in the 50s. Wow. That was okay, I'm that's racist. Is that them? That's a part of the stream, right? Uh, you can try. Yeah, we don't have any cleaners. So you can Wait. you can draw on that one there. Yes, it, you can, we don't need to keep white, that on there, do we? On the whiteboard here. Yeah, yeah, you can draw right okay. on there. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we, we don't have any cleaner up here at the moment. Okay, huh? How about right here? Can I use that? That's fine. Sure. Okay, here we go. We've got ditches in town. Our town was swamp field. So to make the, the farmers and everybody happy, I believe way back the farmers and the town got together and made a series of ditches in town to get the water away from the fields and so they could work them and get rid of the water. Okay, here we go with Old Amherst Road. Here's uh, our nice school right here, right here. And the drainage ditch comes down through here. And then we got uh, Rory's garage here, there's a little ditch there. This one hooks around. This one kind of blends into it eventually. Then there's one over here, uh, approximately where Jimzinski, Peter Jimzinski lives, where his uh, house. But right across the street, the ditch starts. Here's Thomas Farm here. And the ditch kind of goes by, cuts through my property. These all come together and end up 
down Hadley Road where Stanley Michkowski lives here. And that's where the culvert is. Uh, all these ditches need to be maintained. They're full of grass and sediment. And we've got a school here that's gonna be floating if we don't start doing something with these ditches. The kids will be wearing knee boots in class. It's a wet spot to start with. And if you don't take care of these ditches, it's gonna get worse and worse. Uh, I, I approximately live right here, my farm land is here, across the street. But anyway, the, the ditch comes along here, and my uncle used to farm it, my grandparents farmed it, and uh, they grew hay, they grew potatoes, but mostly hay, yeah, because uh, they just developed a hay farm, so he was growing hay. But, when I was a kid, I remember way back in the 50s, John Benjamin came through with a crawling excavator, drag line type machine, cleaned the stitch right out. And I vaguely remember him doing that. Uh, they, they slung the, the, the spoils out of the ditch onto the field. And I was, at one time, then uh, they did it again, I believe. And I was able to, my uncle gave me the tractor and the harrows, and I harrowed up the, those clods of, uh, clay that were dug out of the ditch. That's why I remember. And uh, my uncle always farmed here. He, we had a little Jeep. He'd drive along here. Oh, there's a branch in the brook. Go pick it out. He wanted to keep this flowing because he had a uh, bridge crossing here and he farmed out on this, on the, it would be the east side of the ditch. This the ditches come down through here on, on the east side also. And he had a little field in here and he was always trying to keep the water flowing so he could get across to this little piece of hay here and farm this big piece here. And he had a bridge right here. And that bridge, he had cement abutments put in. He built a bridge. And when we were kids, we used to be able to climb under there. Now those abutments are like flush with the water. So it's, it's built up a lot of sediment and a lot of dirt. And uh, it needs to be cleaned out because we don't do this your school is going to float. This uh, ditch over here, there's a bit, uh, who lives here? There used to be a Relicky greenhouse there. And uh, it goes along the Benjamin property. Uh, there's a man here, Mr. Mitchell. He rents, rents out a couple acres in his backyard to a farmer. And this year he lost 90% of his crop because the water table is so high that, of course, it's a wet year, but still. Uh, he lost 9%. All the other farmers lost, crop, lost a lot of their crop too because they don't have water. But it's a wet year. But still, if these ditches were maintained, the water would flow, the water table would go down, septic systems wouldn't fail, people wouldn't have to run sump pumps around the clock. Uh, we've got Sugarloaf so Estates over here, uh, just north, north of Thomas Farm. Now there's a lot of parking lots, a lot of buildings, a lot of roof runoff, parking lot runoff, some pump runoff, and I believe it dumps into this ditch here. So when the wet year comes, we got our water to contend with plus theirs. And it comes out into the brook here in a pipe. So it's dumping a lot of water. And then just recently, uh, Beaver moved in down here below, below Stanley Mitchkoski's. <laughs> And we wrecked the dam and made a big difference. And then he built it back and Stanley wrecked it again today. It makes a big difference. Another dam was up here, uh, just below my uh, property, on the new uh, Five College Farm, organic farm that's going to be starting up. There was a dam there. I wrecked that several times too, and that made a big flow. I personally, with a long handle hook, Cleaned out my section of ditch so the water would run. I got into the five college section, helped them out. I'd gone down below the brown, brown crossroad uh, culvert here. I pulled some stuff out of there, but it's all grown over big clods of, of uh, grass and uh, bushes and huge amounts of water. Grass. So we opened that up. The water would go right to the river quickly and go to the water table and save our school. Well, I, I did some of what you just said. Uh, it's it's only a two foot lower now, but because I I pulled it, I got the, on the west side. I pulled out that yeah. 
all that stuff there so they can again, I'm if wrong. they start again. But yeah, Eric Jock has a little small farm here with a couple cows and a couple horses, which is kids' uh, show. But on Brown Cross, there's a, a pipe that comes from the east and dumps into this drainage ditch. It must be like a 12 inch diameter pipe. It, in a normal year, that pipe is probably just at water level. The bottom of the pipe is just about at water level. Now it's like above it by a foot sometimes. Uh, so the water is really up there. Of course, we've got a wet year, but still, if we had the ditches running better, it would help everybody's situation. And uh, I talked to former highway uh, super, Chip Thomas. Contacted him years ago about this problem. And he says the really the right way to do it is to go down by the river and start opening it up and then progress all the way up. Work your way backwards, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time and money, but we have people who will run the equipment for nothing, just get it to them. Along this, this ditch here, my ditch, we have uh, the Larry Jock Farm, we got John Copita, myself. I'm sure the five college people will go along with us. Thomas Farm. So below below Stanley and Petrola and Eucabitis. They'll go along with us. Yeah, she was supposed to be here today. I am. Oh, there you are. snuck in behind you. Okay. I was late. I was talking with, with Kurt Griffin oh, about the rules and regulations about the farmland, how it can be dra drained, which is that? Well, if Jerry's done. I personally, uh, 10 years ago, I uh, got in, <clears throat> I uh, contacted an excavation man, very good one. He dug out my section of the ditch. You should see all the dirt and muck we pulled out, the water. And my section flowed right down, but it only stopped where I, where I ended off. It kind of slopped again. So. But I just did it to see how it worked, and it, it, it worked out nice. So, but if every did, if everybody did, it, if every section was done, we'd ha we wouldn't have so many problems. The big problem that I can see in that is the growth yeah, the weeds. Growth. There's mm -hmm. a lot of lot of grass in there. And it's the grasses come in because the sediment sits there, and the grasses feed on it. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, I mean, the only way to get in there is with a machine and, yeah. and take it out and get rid of it. That's the only way to get rid of it. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. You keep knocking it down, well, it's going to grow right back again. And it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But again, that school area is wet, and it's only going to get worse if you don't take care of these ditches. You've got a big expense here. You don't want to make it any worse. Uh, over here, right behind Mike Wisman's uh, it's going to be Mike Wisdom's new uh, millstone store. There's a man who lives there. He said the water comes in. You can be on the north side of Amherst Road and kind of gravitates towards his backyard. Uh -huh. He happens to be a lawyer, isn't he? And uh, he says it all kind of congregates in his backyard. And he says he wished the water would somehow go the other way, but somehow that water's pitching towards him on Main, on South, uh, be south Main Street. Uh, anyway, uh, all through here, this this needs to be maintained, and we addressed all the runoff from the roofs and gutters and parking lot and sumps. I remember that being a big fertile field with Harold Hubbard or uh, farm carrots and carrots and parsnips, cucumbers, parsnips, and that land was uh, pretty wet there, and they had a big uh, uh, irrigation pump, and but they had well points driven in like eight of them. They all connected to one big pipe. They backed up a big pump to it, and he irrigated the, all the area fields. And there was so much water there in the ground. Then they put apartments on top of it, and uh, didn't help things. I remember a friend of mine, when we graduated from high school, I had a job right away. But his first job was uh, jackhammering up the cellars in these apartments and to help them put new uh, drainage in. I think Beltrandi owned it. Uh, that was his first job, Jack hammering the cellar floors up and putting in pipes. Uh, 
Those really should never have been built there. But <coughs> they're there. We can't do anything about them, but there's a lot of water runoff. And it gets into this ditch, it gets into the water table. But uh, well, everybody, it's affecting everybody. If, if we could just clean that out, there's a lot of flow, there's, and there's a lot of slice down there. It drops, I, I bet it drops eight feet from where we're talking to where we're, we're talking to get later. And when we go down further past Michkowski's, uh, towards Charles Schmorowski's, the road, the brook crosses under Route 47. I've been down there pulling the stuff out of the debris out of the brook there. There's been planks and garbage cans stuck in the culvert. I pulled them out and I got things flowing. But just above that, just <coughs> north of Route 47, there's been beaver activity in there on and off and they've kind of screwed things up. But They've moved on and one reason or another and things are flowing again, but all this all these ditches need to be maintained. Because otherwise your your school's gonna float. Okay. And you're you've got the uh, Amherst Road, I understand by the across from the, the New England treatment New England uh, health center there and the old Atlantic farm, uh, Andrew Atlantic's uh, house. And uh, that Amherst Road, I understand there's an underground river running through here somehow. The other, the other problem with some of that land is there's a lot of clay under it. A lot of clay under the and land, most too. Of water. That's why they dug the ditches, so we could farm the land. <coughs> you see in the book how nice that looks with the, the ditches dug and uh, water flowing, no trees, no brush. Of course, no houses either. <laughs> <laughs> no houses, yep. no road. It's a little different. The area. But, uh, so, Estelle? Oh, yes. Jerry, you know about this. Yes. You know, sir. at the end of Helen Sitter's property, yes. the brook there, that's all grown in with the brush. Yes. Starting with ours. Yes. Uh, Mr. Yucobitis' son, Jay, said, if I wouldn't get in any trouble and nobody would give me any, uh, any uh, flack, I'd come in with, my, with a machine and I'd dig it out myself. And Danny Patrol lives over here, and he says, I'll do my section too. So it's going it's it's all grown so we need. What well, did, did you said you talked to Mr. Uh, yes, Kurt? I did. Kurt, yeah. Tonight that's why I'm late. I was on when he called me back <laughs> just before. Well, I well, so I, I go ahead, but un unfortunately it's not as easy as hiring a guy with an excavator. No. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately not. And why not? Estelle may, may Go ahead. No, I I just wanted to tell you that that is all grown in. Yeah. There, starting with ours, where the where it comes from under the road, under the mm -hmm. bridge there, all the way down right to the right to Smorowski stand, yes. that area there. Nice. It's all growing in, which that was cleaned out. I don't know about maybe 15 years ago. I I can't remember really when. I that was all cleaned probably out. Probably longer than that. I, I I can tell you what I what I know, and tell. Let's let's tell well, I don't I don't know a lot, but. Um, the, la the last time we had the discussion, we, we, and we ended up by trying to put a committee together to work on the ditches, and we had one person signed up for the committee. Mm -hmm. um, but as I understand it, it, it's more, if you're a farmer, you can, you can do right, whatever you, have, you want. Yeah, right. I did that. Okay. But the yeah, only, the, as I understand it, the only thing that the town can do is we can go to the culverts and clean culverts, culvert, to clean the culvert chart. So, and that was interesting what you said about, Jerry, I, yeah. I, we, we can do that. But for us to do anything more, we, we've been kiboshed whenever we talked about, because I think you go into the-, the, the Who's kiboshing you? Well, it, it becomes it's much more com complicated because we, we, don't, <coughs> we, don't have any, we don't have any easements, there's no, there's no recorded easements. Well, we'll we'll, we'll go right down the line, well, house to house, I, and they'll give you an easement. Yeah. Well, right. simple as that. I, I'm, I, I'm just telling you. Right now, we 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 don't. There are no there are no recorded easements that that allow that allows for that. Then also is trying to. Um, I think it's the the mass DEP or EPA, one of those that that governs that. And and we we the conservation commission actually looked at that right. Right, that's what he said. Yeah, uh, it, and I, what did he say? <coughs> well, he, the, he said uh, that uh, the highway department needs a permit 
if not at the road crossing. The road crossings, right. right. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, see, I, that's different than what I thought. I thought we could just go in there and just clean it up, but he says we need. Because of the regulations. Now, the, the, the regulations kind of limit what you, if you're a non farmer, what can okay. be done. So these are pretty much all farmers, pretty much. All farmers. Yep. And but if but by the if same you're farmer, if you're far, if you're farm what, what I remember from the last conversations a while ago, the farmer can go in and and, and basically the they can do what they need to do. Right. We as a town are much and, and then maybe forty years ago, fifty years ago you could do that. I I I I think it's much more difficult today. Right, since the right. regulations went in. Even, Is that what even you were with our precious school up here, you don't want that floating. The, all, the school aside, though, the, the same the same regulations that came in that limited what you can do in terms of digging anywhere if you're not a farmer, on the plus side, put strict regulations in when people build new things so that they have to be able to deal with stormwater runoff. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of one of those you know the mixed bags, and that came in after I believe that came in after Sugarloaf. Uh, went in, right? Well, I, I, I have my notes here, and, I, and I, Stanley and Jerry both <coughs> said about wondering about what, what the drain is. I, I thought you had to maintain on site capacity. I, I thought they, they were responsible. So <coughs> I, I was yeah. going to ask Sherry after the end of the meeting to, to see if we get the, the plans, the drainage plans for that, and see <coughs> if they maintain on site drainage. And, and I think part of the problem is, too, is it kind of going back to what you said, people haven't been maintaining their own properties over the years. Uh, whether they're farms or not, and now it's coming, it's because it's such a wet year that, I mean, don't forget, this wasn't called Swamp Field for nothing. I mean, you know, people went in and, and cleared places and probably lived in farm to places where they probably shouldn't have, but, you know, yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying and I, I agree with it, but, you know, you got to realize that, you know, i gotta, I got to maintain my house. Yep. She's got to maintain her house. Everybody's got to maintain their own houses. We can't yeah. just walk away and say we're not doing it. Yeah. We got to come up with a plan somehow to do this. Some solution. I mean, we need no, everybody needs to get in on this and get get it taken because it's only going to get worse. And especially if rain keeps increasing every year, like yeah. we've been going, it's going to. It I is walked, worse I walked that whole length that he was talking to today. Yeah. Except maybe I stopped a hundred feet before the before I, the bridge. I mean the. Um, Grows up. I, there's a lot of plat, a lot of stuff laying in there, especially grass. Yeah, it's all over the place. Now well, it gets back to the point you were making about the sediment and yeah. the grass. There's got to be some way to stop that. You can <clears throat> use something on it to kill it or something, because yeah. that's what you know. And the animals that are the problem too. Wow. That, that that one they had there was like I said. I, you, it dropped four and a half, uh, two and a half feet. And it actually dropped all the way back to to the uh, second bar, second place. Brown Crossroad. Brown Crossroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. It knocked out a foot right there. Yeah. Just by pulling that, opening that one place out, and that's only half of it. The water was flowing much better. Are we going to need to look at uh, reinstating the I think commission I, or whatever? I isn't, isn't there well, a building right what, here? What Stan, what Stan is I mean, you you um. I forgot when they passed the law on um, the trapping law. Don't, don't they have a uh, oh, building right here where they deal with the and animals and stuff like that to move yeah. them around? Don't they have something right here? What? The, the old library? Uh, it used to be the library. Is, don't, is that government property now? Which? That old library? And they, they got a place to take care of animals and stuff like that. If not, they can tell you where to go. Because you got to take them out of there. Yeah. They're just going to make it only worse. We're, we're talking beavers. Talking? Beavers, yeah. If they're, if they're screwing up someone's farm operation, they, they'll either uh, remove them, shoot them, they'll get them out of there. If they're screwing up the farm process. Oh, if, uh, if you okay. have, if you have, if you have something, yeah. There, there's a process that you that you can follow that you can that that you can talk to the board of health and they can grant you permits. And, uh, so yeah. you got to get a, from the town town a permit a permit to kill it. Y yeah, you can on? talk. You can talk to you can talk to the board of health about that. Yes. Okay. That, there, there, is, there is a way to do it. There, but it goes through the board of health, I believe, yeah, I right? Thanks. Yeah. All the sandy road from Brown Crossroad down, even above Brown Crossroad <coughs> and towards uh, Amherst Road, all mostly septic systems have all been 
repaired re and redone oh, in the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a water table it keeps creeping up. Even on my side of the road, I, I live on the west side of Hadley Road, and I had to put a, a semi-raised system in the table. Oh yeah, and I think there's two issues. There's the water like the water table level and then there's rain and runoff yeah. because you've got it coming from both directions at yeah. that point and drainage ditches are only going to do so much for a rise in the water table that, that i mean that just comes up from underneath so so so, so, so can i ask you what else you learned tonight in your telephone call uh another thing is i gotta Mine? tell you about the, about the water level okay? yep. ours is nine feet okay near our septic tank Across the road, Donald Strozik's is two feet, the water table. Yeah, it varies wildly from But when he was building his house, the, the bulldozer was pushing water when he was building his, his cellar. So he was given a permit to build. Okay, how long ago so, was that? Okay. Well, so, 70, so 80, you, were, something you, like you that. also so talked to Kurt, I'm, that. Kurt about, did he tell you anything about, about the process to, to doing the ditches? Besides that, the uh, farmers could do pretty much what they wanted to do, uh, and the town has to get a per. I didn't think we needed a permit. Yes, you do. We do. Because yeah. I remember when I was on the conservation commission a number of years ago, I spent an entire day, uh, and I believe we had waiters on with Scott, as a matter of fact, and, and uh, uh, walking up and down ditches. Yeah, that was. Uh, <coughs> it's it's not as. Samson. Samson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they had little pipes driven in the ground there, measuring the water. Well, uh, that did for us. We need to get it drained. <coughs> All right. Well, what do, I, we, I, well what, what do we do now then? You know, I don't want to see the animals die, but I'd like to get them out of there. Well, and they, you've they, got a number of issues. There's yeah. beavers, which is one issue. And like Tom said, you have to. I would follow up on that to find out what you need to do. See if we can get them out because you either, either that or, or you can shoot it. As so, a primer, you can shoot it. Uh, I I am not 100% familiar with the beaver regulations. So, so. so Stanley, could could you uh, could you talk to Sherry? Give Sherry a, a day to talk to. Uh, the Board of Health to find out what has to be done. Okay. Okay. And 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 can you and talk to Sherry at that that end of the day? Yeah. I if it's okay, what I'd like to do. I I have a bunch. I have a. I thought we were going to talk about something else, so I didn't bring my notes. But I have a, a bunch of notes about from the last time we talked about this. Um, and and I like to bring. I'd like to bring the Conservation Commission in also, yeah, I think so they can to. tell us what we can and can't do, and maybe at then then we can start formulating a plan. We need we need to be able to get in with a machine. I I think you're I think you're right. right. Most of it was going to have to be on the west side because you got a slope on the other side, and you got houses right there that don't go all the way down. Yeah, I think. But but, but, I, but as as I remember last night, and I again I'd have to review with. Uh, the conservation it was it was a lot more it was a lot more complicated than just see, see having somebody go with. in and and because I I, rem I remember they did it in North Hadley behind my on Knightley Road and they just brought an excavator in and they just down to Devine's farm but I I the one thing I do remember is uh, about when because is it defined as the water flows in there. Is it a perennial stream now, or inter it, is it a perennial stream or <clears throat> intermittent stream? The regulations that doesn't allow yeah. us the, the way the right. regulations are written. It doesn't allow us free reign to go in and, and and do a lot with that. Right. You have to you have to look at each like what we'll call ditch. Determine. I, I don't know the regulations. Well, yeah, yeah. All I know is we got to get something done. I I, yeah. I didn't I didn't look I didn't look review Stanley. I I thought we were talking about something else. So. No. We got to get going on it because. We can't leave this like uncle, this all winter. My uncle laid off, and he said that when they were digging these, they hit springs in places, so that we got a little bit of run. Oh, sure. And uh, but still, that multiplies the problem, I believe, and all the debris in it is another factor. Just, uh, no, I, I, we're we're gonna. I like I said, I got the note, Jerry, on here about struggle because that that's a, I mean. 
there's a lot of runoff that's attributed to to a, a roofing and parking. So we have to look we have to look at that. But if if it's okay, I'd like to try to probably schedule another meeting. I don't think we're going to solve like you said not solve it tonight, but we can try to again move forward on it. Um, and maybe we'll get the conservation commission in here. Right. Because I can get my notes and we can talk about it, okay? And we got to find out what we can and can't do. Why does it come So, yeah. It is. It's yeah. Maybe, maybe we we got to deal with it. I think this is, though, I think the solution to this is not going to be a quick fix. Yeah. There's no. The next meeting, this December problem is something that yeah. has accumulated over the last 30 plus years. Yeah. yeah. And board you're board not going to solve it yeah. in six we'll, months. We'll get the board. Well, we got to do what we can. Yeah. yeah. So we, we can't I, I, I agree. And we tried to get we tried to get some folks to, to get involved in this, and nobody wanted to deal with it before. So um, <coughs> because there's to get it done. unfortunately it, so so Stanley, we're going to try to schedule a meeting December 10th. We'll get the conservation and the board yeah, of health together all together. On the 10th. The yeah, I, we're gonna try. Tenth of uh, sure, December. Sure we'll confirm with you. We'll December tenth. Yeah, because we'll there's actually a lot of things to coordinate and everything we'll, to, to we'll try to. First, yeah, because yeah, you're dealing with multiple started, property kind of, owners yeah, and. We lost property. a lot of personal property. His gun safe is all rusted on the bottom. It's horrible. Yeah. Horrible. We'll see what time. He has two surgeries we'll coming up. I'm gonna right. come home from a hospital to a flooded cellar. Oh, I understood. Yeah. I, and and yeah. it's 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 awful. <clears throat> 30 years, I've never had anything like this, never. Well, I think part of the problem is we've had more rain than we have had ever, really. I think the rain, 1972 was the last time we had rain like this. Yeah, it's, it's been quite a while. Rain. Yeah, because I, I've had, I have had water issues in the side of my property that I have never had since I've lived here, and that's since 99. So it's definitely, there's a lot, a lot of rain. Yeah. And and like I said, it's a combination of flow and infiltration from the ground up. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're, we're kind of in a runoff from the mountains. The is, especially with, with a house, you got the water in the house that lifts the floor right up. Right. And that and, and now you got to lift the whole house up. And we don't right. know if the foundation if it's <clears throat> damaged the foundation. <laughs> and and that that's you know thing. that that's almost a different oh. issue than flow because even if you clear those out. You're not going to prevent the water from coming up. You know, if there's yeah. relief the pressure it's put on the, to the river. It's not going Some to of it will, yeah. Out. Well, ideally, the best place would be to start at the river, because that well, way you won't be. You well, first we th th there's going to be a lot of steps. We got to figure out, like Tom was saying, what we can even do first and where we can do it, and then of course there's going to be the issue of cost and and then ongoing maintenance responsibility. Well, there's a lot of issues to work out. Let's take a ride tomorrow morning. And drive down through there, and, and drive slowly, and look over the bank. And you see that how much you gain just by do, putting that the, the animal out of the way. Yeah. Uh, well, beavers can be a. Yeah. They can cause problems. Well, it's yeah, like I said, it was two and a half at the, at the dam they had. It was two and a half. Uh, uh, yeah, two and a half feet. Yeah. That's how much it came up. Yeah. And it, it, it actually came right up in, into the into that. Uh, what's that name of that street? What, Brown Crossroad? Brown Crossroad. Oh, okay. it, it went right through that. Okay. I got it cleaned right there. Stanley, I still want to speak. Yeah. 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 So I would like to know, um, I'm hearing a moral obligation to keep my ditch clean, um, but can I, one of the things I'd like to hear on December 10th is, do I have the right to go in and clear my own, even if it's got equipment, or do I need permission for that, or not that I'm going to do it, but what would be the process for an individual homeowner? That would be one of the things we'd, we'd like to clarify when we have Kurt here yeah. so that, you know, we, right. we can, because it does vary. If you're a farmer, you have a lot more leeway than just a straight homeowner. Sure. How much so. do I have to farm? <laughs> 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 As a quick fix. Uh, have you seen branches? Yeah. Uh, just just water right, you can do that, out. right. Yeah. I used to do that when I was a kid for my uncle. Right, or if there's debris, like trash in there, yeah, or something uh, like that. Well, right. the, the biggest thing is grass. Trash, that's long, long holes, and it's the heavy stuff. There's a ton of it down through there, because I saw a lot of it. I tried raking it out, I couldn't pull it there's, out. There's what they call, yeah. I want to say it, but they're big heads of, of grass, and they grow really thick, mm -hmm. and they like stop the water. Like hole. clumps. Mm -hmm. yeah, clumps. Yeah. And I have a big hook. I've, I've made several of these big hooks and passed them out to the neighbors. And they're eight feet long, and they got a big, like a big spading fork welded on the end of an asphalt rake. And you can pull that debris free and get the water to flow. I've done it all through mine. 
and through five college right up to the Brown Cross and made a big difference. But we need machinery now. Yeah. But Stanley's, Stanley's got a thing there. He, one day, what, a couple weeks ago, remember a couple, one day, a couple weeks ago, the water came up into your field and you drove a stake in? So that's one thing for you selectmen to look at. It's where that stake is and uh, see how high that water got. And where's that stake? Stake is still there. there. That it's stake is uh, on, that, uh, on that culvert, thir 20, uh, 35 feet away from it. There's a red stake. That's where the water yeah. was. That's a high um, water on, on your, by your house to culvert? No, 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 just just by my house. They so came up right to the, of, yeah, coming to just, just past the culvert. So they come up to the stake, in other words? Yeah, yeah, yeah and stake. I just put a stake there just to show everybody where the water was. I had that water got one day. Okay. That was right. a bad day anyways. So that, that was a, we were getting all kinds of water everywhere. All right, we'll talk, we'll, we're, we're going to try to set something up with us, the Board of Health, and the Conservation for December 10th. So this will be next, next time? December 10th. I mean, the next, December 10th. Next December 10th, babe. Sa December 10th. Uh, Saturday? Or whatever. The, whatever the, day it is. Okay. <laughs> December 10th. Okay. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Right. we got to get something done, though. I can't go through this all winter. Because, um... We'll have to leave you know, the house because he life. can't sleep. Okay. Let's plug go. the pump in, unplug it, oh, plug, unplug, all, all night long. Uh, we've been flooded out four times this, this year. This is more rain than re than regular, but the water is this deep. With, uh, not in the house, just at the end of our tobacco barn, between us and Stanley Michkowski's. And that does not go down until it goes down in the brook. And if the brook is clogged, that's not going to go. That drain does not slow. go. It just sits there, sits there. Then a week later, another rain and some more. We didn't have no garden this year, and I've been there almost 60 years on that property. My husband and her and his mother and father built the place in 1902. And I'd been, I was married to John for 26 years. It's been 10 years since he's been gone. So I, I see that. I love the land and everything. It's the richest land. He had it tested at UMass, and it's the richest land in the valley. That farmland right there. Right. And just to see that water that deep like that, four times now. We'll take a ride this walk tomorrow and just look what I, well, what, how much water it went down. Just by knocking off half of the, that uh, the dam that they made. Mm -hmm. I pulled only half of it and it, it dropped two, really? and a half, it did? Feet, two and a half feet. Because the, the water table doesn't go down that, that right there four times this summer, not until it goes the, the yeah, brook. Yeah. Right. area gets cleaned out or whatever down there all those there's nothing but rubbish in there and so, some people throw yeah. crap and plain well, English into the brook over that's the part of the, of the problem too is people dump and, stuff and, and don't maintain it being held by those bushes so, that are in the in the brook one of the issues is as much as you a lot of people are concerned about clearing it out you've got a lot of people who've been filling things in over the years too which is another, and, and it's a problem. We've had tons and tons of rain. I mean, this has we, just been a record year. I had a year. problem with the people that live in that house right next to where the superintendent used to live. Yeah. In there, they were throwing planks and running across from their property to ours, running running bikes across the brook until we took care. Until I threatened them. <clears throat> I, I I really did. I couldn't stand it no more. And they're telling me they're swearing at me to shut up. I says that's my property. You're telling me to shut up? I says, you get off of that property. And they're coming across the property. What if they get stuck in that water and tip over and they're coming up the banks between us and Helen Sitter's property? Well, I think, uh, like Tom said, we'll start on the 10th and we'll see what we can do. You know? okay. It's going to take a lot of work by everybody, but we'll see what we can do. Well, if you keep trying, get you get Thank you. Thank you. And you really can't go through the whole winter with it because you're going to be caught. Well, we got we got to see what we can do first. You know, unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's you got to get in and get tough. it done one way or the other. Um, even if it's only temporary, you just go through it and make maybe some holes or something just to make it work. But I'll tell you, I couldn't believe so much it changed just by pulling out uh, half of that culvert. Thanks for coming in. Thank All, right. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. See you on the tenth. Okay. All right. See you on the tenth. Have a good day. What? You too. Take care. Running full time. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, through the laser fish about, it, I would say it was about, yeah. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Six, seven years ago, about digits. He's got one more question. 
Huh? My, my bill's gone as well. One more question. Yes, yeah, sure. Every year, the appropriate for ditch cleaning, do you spend payments? for about 15 years. I don't see, do? I don't see any money being no. spent on anything. Is that the fact that we're ditch cleaning? Water come across from our I don't think, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen that. All the way from the apartments coming down. I haven't, the uh, I haven't looked in the town reports, but I remember it being a line item, a ditch maintenance account of like 500 a year anyway. And, uh, I haven't, years, I haven't seen that since I've been on here. Here's the budget, budget, I think. Of course, it's written in a font that I can no longer read. <laughs> George has been calling me, and I've been calling him, and we're never finding each other. Would you tell him tomorrow to call me again in the morning? What's that now? George has been calling me. Yeah. Because about that. The culvert. The culvert. Yeah. And I, I keep calling him, and he's not answering the phone. He's does, he's gone by the time I get there. Are you up at six in the morning, Stanley? Now? Huh? Are you up at six in the morning now? Yeah. I'm up all all night, all night, all day. He, and all he's night. here at six. So if you want to stop in to see him. Yeah. Okay. Jerry, I haven't seen ditch maintenance for a long time on the in the budget. Yeah. But, well, maybe it's time to start looking at some of them because you've got a real big problem right now. Even if they just uh, did the culverts and or near the culverts. Well, I, well, until Estelle, Estelle told us we can't do it, I thought we could, but now it sounds like we have to have a permit to do it, Estelle. Yeah, I, I think we got to figure out what we can do first and then take it from there, you know? That's the first step. You pay a lot of taxes every year. When, uh, yeah. Where the taxes go for. Okay. We no, we have one dollar in the. There's a one dollar in there. One to dollar. hold the account. Whole for ditch maintenance. You have a dollar for. I think that's a placeholder. Did you take it out? Maybe. Out? <laughs> Maybe I don't recall seeing it. Before my time. Before I think oh it's. Oh nine. I'll look for that. How much does it cost? Oh nine. Okay. Yeah, so that was before even I, yeah. So it was probably right, yeah, well, right around. Huh? Yeah, that was right around the when. I I think that was a bad time. Yeah. Right, and then you couple that with all the regulations, and it's not as. I, I, we'd have to go back in the budget to find out. Yeah. Okay. We're going to continue, guys, so we, we got to. So I catch you. On Russell Street. I know Russell Street. Like after you go, if you were coming north, you go past Rosex. Yeah. And then um, right on that straight way. So the second one, the other year, the two I've had on that is one. One on the other side of it. Yeah. And then you got two. Um, well, they have a couple of stakes in there? Or? Exactly what you're dealing with right now. Yeah. Have you, have you talked to George about it at all? No, I didn't think of this is what you're looking at. Give him a call. I'm wondering what that's going to look like by spring. He might have it on his list. I'm not sure. That's what, that's a good place to start. Okay. with George. Yeah. Keep going. He might be out, but you can leave him a message, you know, or send an email. Let's know. Yeah. You can do that. You know, it's, it, all right. If you got a picture, send it to him. I'll talk to you. Yeah. Thanks. So it's it's one. So there's drive up, and then there's another. I don't know if that one has a name that feeds right into drive up. So it's right between like Strosics okay. and. Um, so we got uh, approved minutes of uh, November fifth. All right. I'll make a motion on the minutes. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. November fifth minutes are taken care of. So we accept the minutes. Yep, got it. Okay. Uh, Peter Lacey of the uh, Cultural Committee. We're going to skip over updates, unless you have any, got anything no, important yeah, updates. Yeah, I don't have anything okay. major. So. Um, 
Peter Lacey has a recommendation for an appointment to uh, the Cultural Council. Okay, it's this one here. Uh, this is to, to the select board. Uh, this is from Peter Lacey. I am requesting appointment of Jessica Feidenkevitz to the Sunderland Cultural Council. Attach, please find a letter from Mrs. Feidenkevitz stating her desire to be on the council. Okay. I'm sorry, I said Mrs. Motion. I meant Ms. Motion. We have a second. All those in favor, just to the justified and Kevitz to the Cultural Council, signify by saying aye. Aye. Resignation from the Historical Commission. Let's see. Linda, Linda Lapanta has offered a resignation from the Historical Commission. Vote to accept with regrets. Uh, motion. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? To accept Linda Lapaka's resignation with regrets, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And thanks for all her years of uh, dedicated service, too. We also have some some person says named by the name of Natalie Blay has is going to resign from the public library trustees. What is she going to be busy now? I don't uh, know. Huh. <laughs> Uh, yep, and this is uh, dated November 19th, 2018. In case anybody doesn't know, Natalie Blay will be replacing Steve Kulik as our representative in the, Jank, the Great and General Court of Massachusetts, as it is called. Um, she'll so be sitting under the codfish. You want to accept Natalie's re re resignation? I guess we'll accept it, yeah. I'll make hey, a motion. Hey, we have a motion made to accept Natalie Blay's resignation <laughs> so she can uh, make the trip to Boston on a regular yes. occurrence now. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. It's going to be racking up the mileage. Good luck, Natalie. Yes. Um, public comment. Um, just a couple things about the school. Uh, one of which is thinking maybe you would have some influence. Um, we didn't get TV coverage at our last meeting, and I think it's the second time in the last three or four that we haven't had Really? TV well, we got somebody in the back here who might... Uh, I figured this was a good place to come in and bring it up. And uh, I know when we asked where they were, um, Can you check into that yeah, sure. Superintendent sure. Darius said they hadn't showed up. He, he's now going two meetings in the evening. So he'd come from the Conway meeting and we were come next down. and he said they hadn't been at the Conway meeting either. Ah, okay. And, um, you know, there's a public service to yeah. get these oh, things yeah. taped and people watch them and so it's... Uh, so talk to Chris <coughs> in, in if uh, it was we a have to... It weather cancellation, if I remember. Okay. There was snow coming. Yeah, but that's Chris's call for, okay. for our... Okay. 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 Yeah. So I just again that they understand it's important that we get the you know the, the coverage on this stuff because Roger. I hope people watch it. Yep. And, oh, um, yeah. I sent you the minutes, so I'm not going to go through all that uh, in terms of Thank what you. we did. Other just wanted to point out a couple things. Or, uh, we emphasized one was uh, that we are this year our sixth grade has got just one class for sixth grade. It's a small. Mm going through and next year that's going to disappear and so we're going to have there's one other grade I can't remember whether it's third or fourth it's only got one but so this year we've got two single classroom grades next year we're only going to have one yeah so we're going to need another teacher um, you know that plus the horizons program where we have that's our way of taking care of Kids that are in real need of real, real uh, challenges for, yep. for uh, keeping them moving forward. Um, we've had a couple of uh, uh, incoming tuitions that are paying good money, and those are both aging out of the elementary school next year. So we brought this up. It's not budget time yet. We brought this up a couple of times in our meetings, and you know the administration is going to be having to put some. Know, put their thinking caps on about how we're going to try and deal with this stuff with, you know, within whatever resources are available. So I'm just yeah. saying that we'll probably hear a bunch more about this as we get into budget season. Because either one of these are you know, trivial items. Yeah. Don't know how we're going to do. I mean, I, you know, I I worry about how we're going to deal with it. I worry about 
you know, what he's going to have to give to, you know, so on. I mean, you can do some by getting clever, but you can't do that much. So when he gets you so far. When yep. he gets you so far. So I'm just sort of... Sort of a know, fair warning. It's coming. <laughs> yep. Coming. I don't have, you know, sometimes some things are coming and you say, okay, we, we got a solution in mind. This one, I'm not sure, mm. you know, we might have a solution for part of the problem, but certainly not for the whole problem. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, we've had, uh, we're making progress on dealing with boiler issues and flashing stuff in particular, and I want to thank uh, Sherry and Cindy for the work they've done to uh, deal with the insurance companies on this, because uh, we weren't even sure that we were going to be able to get insurance coverage, and it seems like uh, we've got the approval on one item, and we're anticipating, hoping the approval on the other item, and again, it's because both here in town hall or know what you're doing um, and it, you know it's very much appreciated so uh, any connection you know conversations I've had in here uh, you know the response always is yeah you know we're taking care of it which is just great so just want to make sure you guys are aware of the, of the good work that's being done here I'm sure, I'm sure you are but it needs yeah. to be said from time to time it's appreciated um, and then one more thing was that we had in, in our uh, public comment period, uh, we had uh, one of the police officers, uh, Benjamin Peters, came mm -hmm. uh, along with a, a, a parent at the school, Stacy Meyer, and they were um, uh, basically hoping to get some time on the TV to promote stuff they had going on there yesterday at the school. There was a whole PTO fundraiser, but also Officer Peters was there. Um, for a program dealing with uh, uh, getting uh, food for people, okay, or raising, you know, don't get like a food drive. Food, food yep. drive. Um, but I chatted with him for a moment and he said this was just one of uh, a number of things that the police uh, force is trying to do, and it falls under the general term of community policing, you know, getting involved with different yep. organizations. I know there's been a lot of contact. And, and, and coordination between the police in general and the school, um, and Eric's over there a lot, and so yeah. on. And so I just want to again say here that I think that's great because that's what you hope for in in a town that, that, that the is. police are doing stuff like that and and getting out in the community and so on. And you know, eventually it helps them too to do their job. So exactly, um, just so, want to make that point. good yeah, kinds of outreach. Saw there was four officers plus the chief was there in civilian attire and uh, Greenfield had Bill Gordon with donut right. officer donut there so right. yeah so they you know it's a good thing. real effort to to be out in the community and you know right. it helps them they get, they, they, they get to know people they you know they're they're trusted yep, um, exactly those things are important so just again I want to make sure that I, you know you guys are usually aware of everything, but I figured I'd come here and just say something. Especially as the kids see them and as they're growing up, you yep. know, I, yep. yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I think it's a good thing. And then I guess, David, you're going to be on the bargaining committee for the union contract. Is that what I was told? I guess. I is you? that... Uh, and, and is I, that for the elementary school? Scott, the elementary school? Scott, Darius said, what I think Scott's, he said was Scott was doing Frontier. Scott's in Frontier, yes. And you were doing the, the uh, you were on the elementary yes. school. <coughs> yeah. Yes. So that's some work going to have to be done there to try and come up with something that's fair. And it's something also, from my point of view, you know, if you, you always should be looking for stuff, you know. What can we do that may, you know, are there ways we could change how we do some things that both sides would be happy with that make us more efficient in what we do? Yep. You know, and if there's stuff getting in the way, being efficient, you know, can we mutually come up with a way of saying, yeah, let's just, just solve it. Let's just solve it, you know, maybe change a little bit <coughs> that helps out both sides. So it's not at all just you win or we win, but, you know, can you get, you know, I know Darius is thinking that way, and he and the he and, uh, principal have talked a bunch about, yep. you know, stuff that they think is, is right for such thinking. Okay. So, you know, I hope that some, I hope that some stuff can be done there because it's always, you know, it's not just a, you know, you win, I lose thing, but there's got to be ways of trying to... Right. Know. And, you know, it, I mean, not everything is appropriate to be in the contract, but it, sometimes it's a place to at least for, start discussions and say, you know, okay, you might want to take this to the next step right. outside of the contract right. or something. But, yeah, <clears throat> that's always a, a, a tough thing, sitting there thinking 
to trying to determine what goes in, what should go in the contract and what shouldn't. Right. But yeah. So, okay. So, so <clears throat> I, I'm glad you came because I, I, the other day I had the opportunity to have a conversation with someone that was very close to what the, um, occurred on a school district to the north of us with coming up short on money. Um, and from that person's assessment, who's been involved as a selectman, finance committee member, town administrator also, it was um, a, a pretty complicated problem that really shows the importance of a school committee understanding how a budget works. Not, not only the budget as in the expenditure, but the budget as in revenue. Um, and it was this person's opinion that um, the revenue side of the budget was never talked about on the, in the school's committee's meetings. One thing that never happened. So that they, there was never, they never looked at offsets for the expenses. So, so I would just, and, and I know I'm, I'm talking to someone that understands the revenue side, but it, it's, it's important. It's just as important. And some of these things, I mean, I lose, maybe losing sleep is, you know, too strong a language, but I worry a whole lot about you got a budget that, you know, is built on, I mean, the school choice is actually one of the simpler ones. Because you, but you've got still, uh, you've got a bunch of revenue coming in there. You've got a bunch of revenue coming in on the Horizons program. You've got a bunch of revenue coming in for various sped things. You got a bunch of grant income, um, and all these things are not guaranteed. Okay, and they change, right. and they can change. You know, sometimes they can change in a good way, but boy, they can change in a bad way. And they, when they change in a bad way, you're stuck because. Good. You know, you're saying, okay, you got to live within, you know, your again, the standard number of people say is your two and a half percent or whatever it is. The town's got to live within that, and so on. And then, you know, if you're, I mean, that's why this worries me about the thing with the Horizon program because we're getting substantial revenue from, you know, for these incoming, for these students that are being tuitioned in. Now, each one brings a bunch of expenses, like each one needs a separate aid and so on. But we had a, you know, in the discussion we had at the meeting. Uh, on Thursday, it was like something like uh, fifty to sixty thousand is coming in, and you know if you didn't have one of those, and you would lose the eight, but that only covers half the cost. You know, you still got other you still know, losing some income. You still are basically like you know, getting hit financially. Well, uh, and I don't know enough of the details in terms of. Uh, details about how those numbers work other than that's going to be one that we're going to get going to get a lot of attention this year because I you know unless they can come up scramble and come up with you know a couple of replacement tuition in kids which is certainly going to you know there's going to be an effort there and an effort of figuring out okay who can we attract and you know these programs often need redesigning as kids age out and then you've got different kids or even you know a different kid with different needs comes in yeah. Um, so it's not simple, but it, it, is it important? I mean, understanding those numbers. I mean, you can get killed on those numbers if you're not careful. The the <clears throat> I get I, I wanted to say that, so I didn't I didn't forget to say it after. <clears throat> but I think it's important <clears throat> that we do that <clears throat> that process that the revenue side of the budget is looked at. I mean, we always do from the town side. We look at it. It's really. Are actually, it's more important than the actual spending budget is to understand where the funds come from. At the same time, um, I had an opportunity twice in the last week or so to talk to the former uh, president of the Senate and remind him that his comments back in 1991, where he said that 
and, and it's easy that year is easy for me to remember because that's when I first got involved in this 